Welcome back to the end of the bar with questions from coach. And this is the second week doing this and I appreciate everybody for submitting questions. And we're gonna jump right into it because we got about 12 or so questions to answer. But again, I wanna thank everybody for submitting the questions and let's kind of dive right into it. Um, first question is from Julian. He says, as a former OC, are you worried about the offensive schemes? Um, are the struggles related to normal growing pains or a sign of something deeper that time won't fix? First thing, with the entire system being new, as far as different personnel packages, uh, different people, uh, Todd being new, Lamar not being there the entire time dealing with his contract situation, um, them not playing significant preseason snaps, uh, the, the snaps that they got during the joint practices, you know, even though they matter, they're still not tackling, taking to the ground. They're still not full speed reps because both teams are really not trying to hurt each other, which is understandable because you want to you don't want to get anybody to hurt at practice. So that first game was really their first time going full speed. The second game looked kind of better, but then the third game we, we regress but I think that third game was probably the best defense we've seen so far so I think this is normal growing pains we're going to see a really good defense even better than what we saw uh, Sunday this Sunday and we'll have a real good tale of where the offense is or even better tale of where the offense is coming Sunday because what we do versus Miles Garrett will be a real tale and I had a question last week that says, why was the second group looking better than the first group? Well, that wasn't the case Sunday. We saw a really good defensive front, and that second group, for the most part, looked like a second group. But I appreciate the question, Julian. Second question comes from Tony Herrera. He says, I caught a couple of times during a game, Indianapolis had their secondary playing tight man. On replays, it looked like the secondary had their backs to Lamar and he took chances to run. I was thinking Indianapolis was going to go all out and take Lamar's receiving options and daring him to run into their defensive front. That wouldn't be crazy that the D-line and Shaq Leonard, have you seen anything like that on film or am I just crazy here? Well, the Colts really, their front four did a lot of things. Their front four was able to eat up blocks and their linebackers were able to run free. And with the speed of not only Shaq Leonard, but with Zaire Franklin, he was able to kind of mirror Lamar and do things that a lot of other linebacker crews won't be able to do because they don't have the speed that Franklin has. So the things that they were able to do, a lot of teams won't be able to do. Cleveland can kind of mimic that because of what they have up front with Miles Garrett and on the edge with Zedarius. The thing, the thing is with Cleveland is they do have a guy that can run like that with JOK. So we'll see some of those same things with Cleveland that we saw with Indianapolis because they got a similar personnel package, but with a monster up front to do that. Now, the Colts had a monster up front too with Buckner, but he's not Miles Garrett. Had to think of his name. He's not Miles Garrett. He's better than Miles Garrett. But not 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 shading Buckner because he's pretty darn good too. So we got our hands cut out because we'll see some of the same things that we saw um, Sunday, if not better. Because I think Cleveland has a better defense than the Colts, and we struggle with the Colts. But I think we'll be better offensively too. Next question came from Banks Law. He said, "I believe we should replace Simpson with McCarry at left guard, and have him exchange with Moses and Ronnie at times to create exotic looks that won't be one-dimensional." What do you think about that? Simpson with Makari at left guard and have him exchange with Moses and Ronnie at times to create exotic looks that won't be one dimensional. I wholeheartedly disagree with that because I feel like you should get five guys up there and get them to learn each other in those five positions and go from there. That way you can get five guys that see every different kind of look and they know how to play off of each other. And hopefully you can get five guys that nobody gets hurt and they learn each other's nuances and whatnot. But unfortunately, we already got two guys out. I just don't like mixing and matching O-linemen just because. Now, could that work? Maybe. I personally just don't like mixing and matching guys. I want, I want to find my five guys. I want them to learn each other and go from there. Because there's nothing like continuity with O-linemen. Nothing like it, in my opinion. 
Next one is from Yolanda B. Appreciate the question, Yolanda. What is one mistake or error you'd like to see improve on offense before Sunday's game versus the Browns? Communication. Communication across the board, especially when we recognize blitzes are coming. I want us to be able to check out of whatever we have and to something that will beat the blitz. That's what I want to see. Whether it be a high route, whether it be a screen, whether it be a run away from the blitz, I want the communication to be better across the board from the coaches to Lamar, from Lamar to the rest of the team. I want communication to be better uh, to adjust the blitzes. Next one is from Bullets Nation. He says, hey coach, I know it's still early in the season, but Stanley, Zyla, and Simpson have looked bad in games they've played. We can't protect Lamar or open holes for the backs. Should we draft linemen in rounds one or two or too early to press that button? That's a good question, uh, Bullets Nations. I do think it's too early to press that button. I do. Uh, I think it's too early to consider anything because who knows what goes wrong on the back half of the season, uh, especially with the way our backs look. We're down to our fifth and sixth backs already. So I, I just, I don't, I think it's too early for that, but they have not looked good so far. I, my trust in Stanley is, I ain't gonna say it's out the window, but it's not very good right now. Zyla has looked like the worst O-lineman to me right now, next to Mustafa. And um, we just haven't looked good up front as a whole. Now, Linderbaum has looked good until he got hurt. Moses has looked like our second best O-lineman to me behind Linderbaum, but I, you have a good point. I just don't know if it's, we're ready to press that button. And even if we are ready to press that button, I think it's a bit much to spend first and second on an O-lineman. But with the rest of the team shaped up the way they are, that probably wouldn't be a bad thing to do. That probably wouldn't be a bad thing to do. But just let it play out. Let's see how the rest of the season goes. Because, again, it's only week three. We have, we, we're not even in the first finish with the first quarter of the season. Late. Just let it play out first and let's see where it goes. Remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. A marathon, not a sprint. The next question is from DMV for life. <clears throat> and this is a question I think a lot of people want to ask, but don't ask. He says, why is Lamar blamed every time we lose? Even when he doesn't play bad. Because he's the quarterback. It comes with the territory. I mean, when you're the leader of men at that position, no matter how good or bad you are, when you're the quarterback, that comes with a leadership position. Like even, and I'm going to take it back to the simplest of things. And you may or may not say this relates, but I think it does. My last year, you know, doing football, we had a freshman quarterback, like a 13 or 14 year old. And he had to be a leader. He got blamed for stuff. When stuff went wrong, he did it. And he got praised when stuff went right. But because he was the quarterback, He's automatically a leader. He gets blamed for stuff. It just comes with being a quarterback. And the fact that he now has this huge contract, it happens. Sorry. It happens. It, it is what it is. It, he, it comes with the territory. It comes with the territory. And then you have guys that never wanted him to be the, the guy anyway, that looks for any little, any little thing to nitpick. Then you have guys that feel like he got too much money. So they add to that. And then you have guys like myself that are going to find, but not just refine, but going to critique everybody, whether it's Lamar or not. And then you have guys that feel like he can do no wrong. So you have four sets of guys that fall into one. Everybody falls into one of those categories. Everybody. And I'll break them down to you again. There are guys that never wanted him to be the quarterback anyway. They are Joe Flacco stands, and they're never going to change that, that situation. Then you have guys that once he got that money, they feel like he has to be perfect. Then you have guys like myself that's going to critique everybody, and if he messes up, we talk about him. And then you have a set of guys that feel like he can do no wrong, and they just go, anytime you say something about him, you're a hater. It, it, everybody falls in one of those categories. Next question is from Kakashi. He says, do you think Monk might be playing a little too much chess with the Browns and Steelers coming up? Try to keep it too simple or just a bad week for Monk? 
I think Munkin is still trying to learn his personnel, trying to learn what Lamar does well, what the O-line does well, what the backs do well, what the receivers do well. I think he's still trying to figure stuff out. I think he has a general idea of what he wants to do, but he has to figure out what he wants to do versus what the team does well. And I think once all that meshes together, there will be an offensive explosion. I don't think we're going to see a 70-point game like what the Dolphins did, but I still think it's a figuring out process. And again, give it these first four weeks. Give it these first four weeks. And then if stuff start looking terrible after week four, like game five, the London game, and then weeks after that, then I think we can start to hit the panic button. But as of right now, give it a time to keep staring up, to keep cooking, to keep trying to find the different ingredients and see works, what works well with each other. It's, it's early. Again, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Give them time to cook and figure each other out. Again, this thing is still new. New coordinator, new, new system, new style. And again, just, just give it time. Give it time. And again, let, it, let this game go through, well, no matter what happens Sunday. But after Sunday, if the stuff don't start to look right, then I say hit the panic button. Next question is from Muhammad. He says, we fired Saunders, so why do we keep getting injured? Could it be because we promoted Saunders' assistant? And I wish I had a legit answer to that, Muhammad. That, that question is so prevalent right now. Like, our injury list is it's crazy how many key players are injured and why we keep going through this year through year. And like, and I, I, I wholeheartedly thought it was Saunders. I really did. And the fact that we promoted his assistant, I hope he's not doing some of the th same things that Saunders did. But when you work up under somebody, you pretty much do what they taught you. That's, that's what happens. Like the offense that I run when I do have a chance to coordinate, I run what I was taught. So we were promoted his assistant. I'm sure he's running some version of whatever Saunders taught him. There are probably some nuances and they probably figure some stuff out and change some things. But for the most part, he's probably doing some of the same stuff that he was taught under Saunders, unless he worked for somebody else and had his own plan, you know, from that other person. So it could be because we promoted Saunders' assistant. I don't want to put all that on him because I don't know. He might have worked for somebody else and is doing something different. I know they talked about doing different stuff. I don't know how much they're doing it, but I personally would ha would not have promoted uh, somebody that worked for Saunders. And I, and I hate for people to lose their jobs because I definitely don't want to lose mine. But I would have brought in a, a different head guy and maybe kept the assistants. I would have brought in a, a, a different – I wouldn't have promoted one of Saunders' assistants up. I would have brought in a different head guy and then maybe kept the assistants that wanted to stay. <laughs> this next question is from Donnie J. It says, Coach, since we're down a couple wide receivers, you think we bring back James Prochet? I wish, but – that ship is sailed. That ship is sailed. Uh, yesterday, I think we brought up um, Dante Demas and um, what was the other name I saw? Dante Demas and somebody else that they brought up to uh, bolster the wide receiver core since we had a couple of wide receivers down. It wasn't Proche. Uh, but I did see that the Steelers brought Proche in for a workout. The Giants did a couple of weeks ago, but yesterday the Steelers brought Proche in for a workout. So if Proche goes to the Steelers... That would be funny. That would be funny. As well as they, as well as the Steelers um, cultivate receivers, if Proche goes to the Steelers and gets his career off the snide, I, I'm, I'm going to not curse this episode, but I'm going to curse this one time. If Proche goes to the Steelers and gets his, his um, career off the snide, that shit would be funny. That would be some fun stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> and ironic, <laughs> and ironic. <laughs> but let's move on. Great question. Great question, Donnie. <laughs> uh, next question is from Lauren Cook, or Lorcan Cook. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Uh, if Linda Bone was back against the Colts, do we win? It's a good question. It's tough to say. It's tough to say. Because let's, let's take the two fumbles. The two fumbles by Lamar. Neither one, I think, is his fault. Um, but neither one of them were the Senators' fault either. Now, that was that bad snap. That was that bad snap. 
That's, that's tough to say, one person. That's really tough to say because the whole offense as a whole was kind of stuck in a rut. That's really tough to say. But I'm going to say, yeah. I'm going to say if Linda Bone was in the game, yeah, we win. I do. I do. Because Linda Bone would control all that up front. He, his communication would probably be pretty darn good and guys would know who to pick up and whatnot. So I'm going to say, yeah, if Linda Bone was up there, yeah, we do win that game. And it's not just that his blocking, it's his communication with transferring calls and stuff down the line. We know who to pick up. We, we can pick up blitzes and, and different kind of stuff. So I think if Linda Bone was there, yeah, we win the coach game. Yes, we do. All right, next up, next question is from Rave Kingdom. He says, when will we learn Justin Tucker is the GOAT? When does he get 100% trust? Um, Rave Kingdom, this is one of the few times I'm going to kind of disagree with you. The, um... Situation warranted a little distrust in Justin Tucker. And not because he missed the first kick. Not because he missed the first kick, but because it was a humid, wet, slippery day. And if you have issues with that plant leg, he's not going to be able to get power on that swing leg. If you get any kind of situation where your plant leg slips, you're not going to get power in that swing leg. And especially with his plant leg being anywhere around the logo, like where they paint, plant, paint the Raven, that paint is slippery. Those painted areas on the field are slippery. So I can see if it was in the grass, maybe, but those painted areas, that paint's slippery. So I, I, I understand where you're coming from, and I know he's the GOAT, and maybe we should have ran him out there, maybe we shouldn't. But I can I can understand where why they didn't run him out there for a sixty some odd yard field goal, but um, I get it. I just say I get it. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Oh, that's all of them. That's all of them. Hey, so I appreciate y'all for bringing your questions to the end of the ball. This is another episode of questions with coach and again we'll have another episode of questions with coach next week i'll post the link monday and you can send your questions in and again everybody that posted a question today i'll make sure you get your points to you and probably by the time you see this you already have your points posted to your account so i appreciate everybody you could have been anywhere in the world but you chose to be here with me and again thank you thank you thank you and i'll see y'all soon go ravens flock peace